Good morning. As we prepare to celebrate the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time, our parish family extends a prayerful welcome to visitors from throughout our diocese to their cathedral church and to all who are gathered with us as our sisters and brothers in the Lord. Please join in singing the processional hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell, which can be found in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, as we prepare to celebrate together these sacred mysteries, let us call upon the Lord for the forgiveness of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who showed the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who, for the faith they profess, are accounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Oh! 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at great length, in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. That is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand. You shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. 
lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. The seed that falls on good ground will bear a fruitful harvest. That seed, those graces that God so freely bestows, rain down upon us in every land, circumstance, and peoples, upon every soul like the dewfall of the Holy Spirit, to bring us those graces that last forever, those of faith, hope, and love. It is through those graces welcomed and worked upon in our lives and in the temple of our souls that fruitful soil comes from. It is nurtured by God's love. The seeds are freely given for Christ has paid the price and the reign of grace is bestowed generously and endlessly so that no soul should be lost. That is why the Christ came into the world as the word through whom all things came to be and through whom they would find their fulfillment. He is like us in all things but sin to save us from sin's power. He came to gather souls to his mercy to make souls understand through faith the degree to which they could come into intimacy with God, unrestricted, unbounded, unfettered by the power of sin or the glamour of evil. That's what St. Paul is speaking of in the second reading. When he says that creation has been made subject to futility, to frustration. What is futility? Well, I suppose one definition could easily be doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different ending or conclusion. That's also, by the way, the definition of insanity. So you know, because I am a creature of habit, that your pastor is somewhat crazy. No one ever objects when I say that in a homily. But the truth is, we are so bound and in the rut of sin that we find it difficult to struggle out, to become as we were baptized, to be that new creation, to be reborn by water and the Spirit, and to live according to those promises and reject the glamour of evil so as to live as children of light and resurrection glory. We are being birthed in that 
communion and in that conversion into that newness of life. It's a beautiful calling forth. It's the purposefulness of our very being created so that we can know love and serve God in this world and be happy with him in the next. You see, the Baltimore Catechism still comes into play. But I'm old and in my second childhood, so it's easy to remember. The gospel underscores this journey and its struggle into freedom from the bondage of sin. So Jesus gives parables so that people can come to think about them, not necessarily understand them, gradually come through the wisdom and good counsel of the Holy Spirit to that understanding, but that only happens when in the freedom of will the individual invites the Holy Spirit into their soul, into their heart and mind. So once that invitation is extended and the graces are bestowed, then understanding comes. But before that, the word, the seed, gets trampled underfoot because we're fickle. Oh, this sounds like a good idea this day, and tomorrow it will be another one, or what is correct or what is popular. The word gets trampled on the pathway of life, or perhaps it gets choked in the thicket of our desire for power or wealth or fame or glory or prestige. And we set aside God and we think it is only by our own handiwork that we succeed. Perhaps it's just left out, untended, and the heat of the day burns away its blessing and its bright promise, which is truly immortality. Why would we forfeit these gifts so casually? Why do we sometimes not even think about them? Well, I do on Christmas and Easter, which is well and good, but not good or well enough. Each day is the Lord's. Each day he has given us to be glad and rejoice in him. So the scripture is asking of us, to be both gardener and garden, to allow the Holy Spirit to instruct and admonish us so that we will get down and weed and build the hedgerow and plant the seed and nurture it with care and sacrificial love, that we will be the very garden that produces that fruit 30, 60, and 100-fold. So the invitation is there. What is our answer? Will I be a gardener? Will I be the garden? Will I be in communion with the will of God? Will I say yes to the call of my name? Will I return and share the love received? Will I forgive as I've been forgiven? will I rejoice and be glad in God, my Savior. <clears throat> Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I confess one baptism. My sisters and brothers in Christ, let us join our hearts and voices in prayer to God, our Almighty Father, asking the Lord to hear and answer us. For the peace and well-being of the whole world, especially for the end of the pandemic, that God's gifts to us in this life will lead us to salvation in the life to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our Bishop, priests, deacons, and the people they have been called to lead and serve, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the old and infirm, and for all who suffer from loneliness and infirmity, that we will sustain them by our love and our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Emily Heinz and Mark Laudman and all who will be joined in the sacrament of matrimony this weekend, and for Kuina and Eric Schiedermeyer, who celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary, may they grow in wisdom and grace before you, our loving God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all of our deceased relatives and friends. And we remember the prayers written in our Book of Intentions and the prayers we offer in the quiet of our heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church for you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, 
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will, and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Praise you forever and ever. 
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of your body and blood. I love you and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn of praise for the beauty of the earth, which can be found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Kawina and Eric Schiedemeyer are here in the church with us and I think it was with Bishop Robert Morlino that they came for the blessing of their 20th wedding anniversary 20 years ago when I first came as pastor to the cathedral as well. So you've returned for the 40th. So let's see, that would be multiplied monetarily by, well, we'll talk that out after the mass. God bless you, congratulations, and thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in peace to love and to serve our Lord.